biggest mistakes that I see doctors making when it comes to treating your patients with sleep issues. If you are a healthcare practitioner, if you're a physician, a nurse practitioner, a PA, a psychotherapist who wants to up-level your clinical sleep medicine knowledge, then go ahead and subscribe to this channel. I'm Dr. Nishi Bhopal. I'm a physician. I specialize in integrative psychiatry and I'm board certified in sleep medicine. And this channel is all about really practical information uh, about clinical sleep that you didn't learn during your training, but that you need to know if you're seeing patients. And before we jump into the content, I also would like to invite you to grab my free sleep mini course for outpatient doctors. It's filled with lots of really useful information you can use in your clinical practice today. So you can get that at intrabalance.com forward slash doctors. You can also uh, click the link in the video description underneath this video to get the course. And then lastly, you can also get CMEs for watching this. So watch this video till the end and then go ahead and grab your CME credits and the link to get your credits is under the video as well. So I'm gonna share some of the three biggest mistakes that I see physicians making when it comes to treating your patients with sleep issues. And I see these issues coming up time and time again uh, because I'm a psychiatrist in private practice. I see patients with sleep disorders as well. And I get a lot of uh, second opinion consultations referred to me from my fellow psychiatrists or other physicians in the community or therapists in the community. I also get a lot of curbside consults from my colleagues and there are three mistakes that I see happening repeatedly, so I thought I would share some of these. And before we talk about that, I just also wanna um, emphasize that it's not your fault. If any of these mistakes resonate with you, it's totally not your fault because most physicians only get about two hours of sleep education during medical school, which is kind of crazy because all of our patients have to sleep because sleep is the fundamental of health. Even we ourselves have to sleep. So it's really imperative that as healthcare practitioners that we understand the fundamentals of sleep medicine. And most of us will get a little bit of training in residency, maybe just a lecture here and here or there, um, but not a lot of really robust clinical information on sleep. So that's why I started this whole channel. So anyway, okay, let's talk about the three mistakes though that you might be making with your patients in your clinical practice. The first mistake is missing out on the root cause of the patient's sleep issue, including other sleep disorders. Because a lot of sleep disorders can show up like insomnia. So you might be seeing patients with insomnia and treating them as if they have primary insomnia when there's actually something else going on. So a little quick pop quiz for you. How many sleep disorders do you think there are? And whenever I ask this in lectures, I get widely different answers. Sometimes there's a few people who actually guess the right answer. So the, the correct answer is there are about just over 80 different sleep disorders recognized by the ICSD, which is the International Classification of Sleep Disorders. So people are always surprised about this one but there are lots of different sleep disorders to consider when you're seeing a patient with sleep issues. Um, some of the more common ones that you are likely to encounter in your clinical practice are sleep apnea, restless leg syndrome, circadian rhythm issues, and narcolepsy. But also don't forget about other things that can be contributing to the patient's sleep issues. So this includes medications, this includes other medical conditions like metabolic issues, uh, like uh, thyroid issues and so forth. So don't forget to look at the bigger picture, but there are other things to consider as well. This includes the patient's environment, what their bedroom is like. You might be surprised when you ask patients about the environment that they're sleeping in. Oftentimes these environments are not conducive to good sleep. Ask them about their lifestyle, ask them about their nutrition, their diet, look at their gut health. There's emerging research showing that gut health has an impact on sleep quality. How are they managing stress during the day? Are they struggling with anxiety or depression that hasn't been treated? What is their micronutrient status like? Are they missing key nutrients that can have an impact on sleep? And there's, again, some really interesting research being done on the impact of micronutrients and sleep quality. So things like vitamin D, vitamin B12, magnesium, and so forth. So as you can see, there's a lot of different factors that can impact a patient's sleep quality, um, their subjective sleep quality and their objective sleep quality. So don't forget to look at the underlying root causes. And I'll share an example here. There was a patient that was referred to me for a consultation. She'd been struggling with insomnia for 
Over 10 years, she'd been prescribed different types of medications for insomnia, and we did an evaluation. I like to do what I call like a root cause analysis to see what is going on. So we looked at all of these different factors, and it turned out that there were two primary issues. One was that she was sleeping in a bedroom that was not conducive to good sleep. It was unventilated, it was dusty, she couldn't really breathe properly. So we uh, addressed that. The second issue was that she actually had sleep apnea this whole time that had not been diagnosed and had not been treated. So we got her sleep apnea treated, we optimized her bedroom, we looked at some lifestyle factors, and she's sleeping well. She didn't come back to see me because she is now doing well and happy with her treatment plan. Okay, mistake number two that I see doctors making all the time is not having a plan to get patients off of sleep aids before you prescribe them. So this includes things like hypnotics, your medications like Ambien or Lunesta, or benzodiazepines like Clonopin, Ativan, or Xanax, and so forth. Now, it's not to say that these medications are bad or they should never be used, because these medications are a tool. And when they're used appropriately, they can be very useful. But problems arise when they are used inappropriately or when patients are now reliant on these for extended periods of time. So what I recommend is before you even prescribe a medication like these, these controlled substances, um, or even other types of sleep aids that are off-label or maybe aren't controlled substances, have a conversation with your patient about expectations with these medications, about how long you would um, want to use them for, what's appropriate, the different um, contexts in which they're appropriate, especially if you're using them on a PRN or as-needed basis. Many of these medications are not meant to be used for more than two weeks at a time or are meant to be used only intermittently. So you wanna have a conversation with your patients about, about that and what you're going to be doing in the interim to help support their sleep quality without medications. Because medications are one tool, but they're not the only tool that you wanna be implementing. So if you're using medications to help support your patients with sleep, they're a great tool. But you also wanna be looking at those other sleep disorders that I mentioned. Is there something else going on? Is there a sleep disordered breathing issue or something else? Are there other medications that could be interfering? Are there lifestyle factors that need to be addressed? And so forth. Would this patient benefit from a course of CBTI or cognitive behavioral therapy for insomnia? Uh, nowadays, there are lots of apps and other online programs that can be done. So if you don't have a CBTI therapist locally, there's lots of different ways to access CBTI nowadays. And then if you are working with patients where you need to taper them off these medications, there's a really great resource at deprescribing.org that has excellent guidelines on how to deprescribe these types of medications. If information like this is helpful for you, then go ahead and click the like button. Mistake number three that I see physicians making all the time is not making your own sleep a priority. Now, this is no surprise, right? Because sleep is not a priority during residency training, definitely not a priority during med school or fellowship training. So it's just not something that we're used to doing. Sleep, self-care, paying attention to our own, own well-being, these things often are relegated to the back burner. Many of us may be bedtime procrastinators, so uh, you can see my video on that to learn more about bedtime procrastination and how as busy professionals, we may tend to engage in that and what to do about it. But I do like to emphasize this because it's important that we as physicians practice what we preach. So if we're talking to our patients about lifestyle, about sleep quality, about not relying too much on medications, on taking care of our nervous system so that we can get better sleep, about um, prioritizing sleep as a fundamental of health so it can help us with all our different aspects of life, we need to be practicing that as well. So we want to be practicing from a place of integrity. Uh, and those of us who are integrative medicine practitioners or lifestyle medicine, um, this is especially key because it just doesn't feel good, right? If you're telling a patient um, to do certain things, if you're giving them certain recommendations and you're not doing those yourself, there's a disconnect there. So practicing with integrity and authenticity and making our own sleep a priority is really important. So I want to remind you that sleep is your superpower. Sleep is your patient's superpower as well because it really is the foundation of good health. 
So if you could use a roadmap for your patients to help improve their sleep, check out my course called the Holistic Sleep Reset. It's a five-step roadmap that walks patients through a process to improve their sleep quality. I also have a clinical sleep kit for physicians and healthcare practitioners to use in outpatient practice. Um, so that is gonna be coming out soon. Right now it's April of 2023. So stay tuned for more information on the clinical sleep kit. If you're interested in that, then you can sign up for the waitlist and I'll send you more information. And all of these links again are in the video description below. If you are a healthcare practitioner, if you're a physician, a nurse practitioner, a PA, a psychotherapist who wants to uplevel your clinical sleep medicine knowledge, then go ahead and subscribe to this channel. I'm Dr. Nishi Bhopal. I'm a physician. I specialize in integrative psychiatry and I'm board certified in sleep medicine.